Hey guys, welcome back to Circuit Loop. I am Roshni and today we are going to discuss operational amplifier that is commonly known as op-amp. So without wasting any more time, let's proceed. Guys, operational amplifiers are regarded as one of the fundamental building blocks of analog electronic circuits. These are basically linear devices that performs the function of ideal DC amplification of the signals that are present at its input terminals. It is designed to perform multiple operations such as addition, subtraction, differentiation, integration, etc. Op-amp is basically a three terminal voltage amplifying device and out of the three terminals, there are two high impedance inputs and the third one belongs to the output. Here we have shown the circuit configuration of an operational amplifier. Here V1 and V2 represents the two inputs and V out is the output. Plus V and minus V represents the supply provided. Let us now proceed to check the ideal circuit and the various characteristics that the operational amplifier exhibits. So here we are having an ideal circuit of an operational amplifier. The two inputs V1 and V2 are provided at the non-inverting and inverting terminal of the amplifier respectively. Here the non-inverting terminal is the one with positive sign and the inverting terminal is the one with negative sign. One should note here that the operational amplifiers exhibit high input and low output impedance and can amplify signals up to 1 MHz. This can perform amplification of AC as well as DC input signals. Guys, not only addition, subtraction, etc., but these also perform phase shifting and can be used in oscillator circuits, pulse generators, comparators, etc. Due to the inverting and non inverting input terminals of the op amp, the output obtained is the product of gain of the amplifier and the difference of the two signals that are applied at the input terminals. Here, this VD represents the voltage equivalent of the difference of two input voltages, that is V1 and V2. Guys, please do not get confused over here that this positive terminal necessarily need a positive voltage to be applied over here and this negative terminal necessarily requires a negative voltage to be applied over here. As this is not so and we have mentioned already that positive is used to represent the non-inverting terminal and negative is used to represent the inverting terminal of the operational amplifier. We have already discussed that the gain of this amplifier is A and so the output signal which we will get will be the product of the voltage difference of the two applied inputs and the voltage gain of the amplifier. Hence we will get this as our output signal. We can write this as A of V1 minus V2 which represents the difference of the two input signals. From this expression we can clearly say that the output voltage is proportional to the algebraic difference of the two input voltages. Thus we can say that difference is amplified and not the original input. Let us now proceed to understand the various characteristics possessed by the operational amplifier. The first one is open loop gain and it is represented by AV0. The open loop gain is basically the gain of the amplifier without feedback and thus it is called so. Ideally the value of this open loop gain must be infinite and the practical value ranges between 20,000 to 2 lakhs. The second one is input impedance represented by ZIN which is shown over here in this circuitry. Basically ZIN is the ratio of input voltage to the input current thus its value should be infinite so that no current must flow from supply source to the input circuitry of the operational amplifier. However real op amps exhibit input leakage current in the range of few picoamperes to few milliamperes. Proceeding further the next characteristic is output impedance represented by Z out which is shown over here. Ideally the value of the output impedance must be zero so that maximum current from source will get supplied to the load. But when we talk about practical amplifier then Z out ranges between 100 to 20 kilo ohms. Next let us talk about bandwidth. So bandwidth is also an important characteristic and should also be considered infinite ideally. An ideal op-amp will be able to amplify any frequency signal thereby exhibiting infinite bandwidth. But in practicality the bandwidth of the op-amp is limited by the gain bandwidth product which is equivalent to that frequency where the gain of the amplifier becomes unity. The last characteristic is offset voltage and is represented by VI0. Ideally it should be zero. 
This will be zero when the voltage difference of the applied input is zero. That is, VD must be zero. But in reality, op-amp have some amount of output offset voltage, and so its value is not zero. Let us now proceed to check the circuit representation of inverting operational amplifier. Guys, here it is clearly shown that the input V in is provided to the inverting input terminal of the op-amp, that is the negative terminal. Hence, it is called so. Along with that, the feedback of the circuit is also provided to the inverting input terminal. Guys, the term feedback is used to represent that some part of the output is given back to the input for further operations. This RF plays a crucial role over here because this is the feedback resistance through which the feedback signal is provided to the inverting terminal of the op-amp. So basically what happens here is this VIN drives the inverting input through R1 that is this resistance and thus we get inverted input. This inverted input at this particular terminal will get amplified by the open loop gain of this amplifier in order to provide inverted output voltage at this particular point that is V0. Hence for this particular input we will get this output which is amplified but in inverted form. Now coming next to the non-inverting type of operational amplifier. So the circuit representation clearly shows that input in this particular case is provided to the non-inverting input terminal that is the positive terminal of the operational amplifier. As here the input is directly fed to the non-inverting terminal therefore at the output side the signal will not undergo any phase change. Along with that the output through feedback resistance RF is provided to the inverting terminal of the amplifier similar to the previous case. So for the given input this, the output will be in this manner. We can clearly see that this output is amplified version of the given input without any phase change. Now have a look at the voltage transfer curve of operational amplifier which is shown here. This curve is drawn between output voltage V0 and differential voltage VD keeping the gain of the amplifier that is a constant. This curve is ideal voltage transfer curve as it is formed by assuming that the output offset voltage is zero. Practically, the value of output offset voltage is approximately zero and thus can be ignored for calculation simplifications. From the graphical representation, we can clearly say that the output voltage V0 is increasing in direct proportion with the differential input VD. However, this variation in proportion is only valid till saturation is achieved because once saturation is achieved, that is this particular point is obtained, then the output voltage will become constant. Well guys, this is all for now. I hope you enjoyed this session. So please do like and share this video and put on your comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to never miss any updates from us. I'll catch you all soon. Till then, take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.